Blessings. Hey, it's Prophetess Tabitha. Today I want to talk to you about overcoming the spirit of rejection. This is going to be part one in a series, but then we're going to talk about the spirit of rejection. So the enemy's strategy against us is to wound us with rejection and abandonment. As this gets us to compensate through flesh patterns that typically open us to demonic activity. Physical wounds can be bandaged immediately. However, emotional wounds, we try to do something else about them, right? And so uh, remember, pain seeks pleasure. And so if you have a tree that uh, you plant but decide you want to uproot it, it's better to do so when it's eight inches than when it's three miles, right? At eight inches, the root system is only eight inches deep. Um, at Three miles is three miles deep. So we need to pray for our children before the root system is deep and more difficult to uproot. Wounds become strongholds and strongholds attract spirits. And so a stronghold is a, a belief system, a pattern that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. And so a stronghold will inevitably uh, take hold of us and cause there to be bondage and entanglement that we really don't want or don't need to be dealing with. Amen. And so a stronghold will include def default reactions and defense mechanisms that preserve a particular uh, pattern. A spirit of rejection multiplies those wounds and those feelings of rejections and the lies, the foundational lies that we end up believing. Um, irrational behavior is also associated with the spirit of rejection, right? And so we are then more likely to engage in counterfeits in order to deal with our pain. God designed families so that children build up emotional uh, object constancy through the love and affection they receive from their parents. And they receive this when it is not fully present, there will be holes in our souls that produce fruit. And you can decide for yourself what type of fruit you want, right? You cannot repent of a demon. Let's get that clear. Repentance will not be enough to deal with demonic force. Neither can you repent of a wound. A demon has to be cast out and a wound must be healed. Hence, inner healing and deliverance, right? So let's talk about this. God's acceptance. God's acceptance is bigger than your rejection. You can look at Psalms 2710 for a reference. Um, when my mother and my father forsake me, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. So we should remember that there is always a way out despite all the pain we have been through. God should always be our source, period. Don't go to counterfeits, but make him your stronghold, right? Psalms 27 verses 1 through 5. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 2 says, when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Come on now. Verse 3 says, though an army army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, not mine. Verse 5, for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me, he shall set me high upon upon a rock hallelujah romans 15 and 7 says it this way accept one another then just as christ accepted you in order to bring praise to god first timothy verse 1 chapter 1 verse 15 here is a trustworthy saving that deserves full acceptance christ jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom i am the worst Psalms 139 verse 14, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 through 6 says, praise be to God. 
and father of our lord praise be to the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing hallelujah in christ jesus for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight in love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through jesus christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves hallelujah if you look at colossians chapter 1 verse 21 through 22 we have some more reiterations here once you were alienated from god and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior but now somebody say but now hallelujah but now he has reconciled you by christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free of accusation john 6 37 all those the father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me i will never drive away acts chapter 10 verses 34 through 35 opening his mouth peter said i most certainly understand yes lord now that god is not one to show partiality but in every nation the man who fears him and does what is right is welcome to him so this is god's truth re with regards to acceptance but we live in a world full of rejection this wounds us strongholds are erected and a spirit of rejection is attracted so let's talk about the second thing here is attitudes attitudes and behavior associated with rejection all of these are flesh patterns that are not in line with god's truth we just so spoke of god's truth it's important to see that when behavior is based on false belief the fruit is not good our action is a result of this identification and so our action as a result of this identification is to confess repent and renounce right confess repent renounce often it's very subtle because the outward behavior is not always sinful but the motive of the heart is remember that you are not a victim you are responsible for your behavior and your attitude generally speaking you have passive reactions to rejection and aggressive reactions to rejections so rejection comes in many guises many forms right one constant feelings of abandonment fear of losing a loved one through death fear of being cheated on fear of rejection can also result in anger putting up a shield of anger as a defense mechanism i'm talking about some fruits here often feeling misunderstood people don't get me always explaining yourself because you feel misunderstood two addictions and substance abuse are also linked to rejection alcohol abuse drug abuse food abuse instead of running to the prince of peace we practice idolatry where do you run questions the bottle will not reject me masturbation and gambling are also common outcomes of rejection it's easy to judge others but we must realize that the pain can be severe and pain seeks pleasure proverbs 15 13 says it this way a joyful heart makes a cheerful face but when the heart is sad the spirit is broken Proverbs 17, 22 says it this way, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Proverbs 18, 14, the spirit of a man can endure his sickness, but a broken spirit, who can bear, right? And so then we have unbelief, right? When the people who were supposed to show us love didn't do so, then our tendency is to doubt the love of God. Because see, the way you love, uh, the way you were treated by your parents is the way you will look at God as well. So you got to get free of that. Sometimes we can minister to others, but when it comes to ourselves, we sink into unbelief, right? That's a spirit of rejection. That's a place of, of captivity. Uh, when, God, when good things happen to us, we're suspicious, waiting for the next shoe to drop. We think that there's a catch. There's no catch. I just want to love you. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 13 says it this way. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you and have an evil heart of unbelief, lest there be any in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Often you feel very insignificant and inferior if you're dealing with a spirit of rejection. When people try to show you otherwise, you will still interpret your world through that lens of rejection. You often have strong thoughts of self-hatred. The isolated self is a bad self. 
period. You think you love addictive relationships or you have these addictive relationships patterns, attraction to addictive relationships. You think you love them, but it's more apt to say you need them. Your self image is based on their acceptance or rejection of you. First Corinthians nine nineteen. for though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them. Addictive relationships are characterized by emotional abuse and control. So they are also characterized by codependency and collapsed boundaries. That should be scary. You don't know where you end and the other begins. As long as you have the root of rejection, you will always be bent toward man and not straightened toward God. John 5 verse 41 through 44. I do not receive any glory from men, but I know you that you do not have the love of God in yourselves. 43, I have come in my father's name and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive them. 40, receive him. 44, you, how can you believe when you receive glory from one another and you do not seek the glory that is from the one and only God? So a common form of addictive relationship is joining a subculture or a cult, right? Um, the fifth way that you can identify this is criticism and hypersensitivity. You exaggerate the probability of being rejected. Small mistakes are seen as causes of abandonment. Offended or embarrassed when corrected or disciplined right? That's when you know you're dealing with rejection. When people are often in, in offense or easily offended, easily embarrassed, that's probably the spirit of rejection. Another fruit is self-pity. You see your situation as all bad and others as all good. Performance mentality to maintain relationships, uh, love with a hook, disappointment when love is unrequited, no love is returned or there's no reciprocity, right? Um, Debt-based relationships, they owe me this, right? That's, that's rejection. Perfectionism and approval addiction, right? You're addicted to somebody per approving what you do. And this manifests in your parenting style and it also produces guilt. Another uh, scripture to look at is Luke chapter 6, verse 34 through 36. And if you, tend, if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to senders, sinners expecting to be repaid in full. Verse 35, but love your enemies, do good to them and lend to them, expecting nothing in return. Then your reward will be great and you will be sons of the most high for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful, right? So Jesus is saying, hey, don't do anything for selfish gain. Do it from your heart. That's how my granny taught me. So listen, self-sufficiency. This is another form of rejection. Maturity is seen in interdependency, not independence. Isolation, hiding from love. Oh, I'm not worthy or they can get all the accolades, just not me. Often the result is sabotaging relationships. This is often how the orphan spirit works also. The result is that you end up with no mentors and your relationships with authority figures suffer. Uh, protesting behavior. It's easier for you to attack than express your needs in a vulnerable manner. You can protest by rejecting others before they can reject you. Another fruit of rejection is lies. I will always be looking from the outside in. Your inner villagers and emotional triggers are loud, right? Um, another fruit is attention-seeking behaviors, fabrication. You want to wear things that bring the attention to you, right? Um, comparisons, always looking over your shoulder, never feeling like you're good enough, playing catch-up. Uh, you also may suffer from the hero syndrome. If I achieve greatness, then I will be accepted. The sad thing is that it's never enough. Sometimes the family relies on the hero for their corporate self image. All eyes are on you to achieve everything so that your family looks good. Uh, you're dealing with self or the spirit of rejection. If you have permissive and placating behavior in your relationships, and this is seen in management style and in parenting style as well, you project your fear or re of rejection onto others. You don't discipline others because of fear being misunderstood and ultimately rejected by them. You fear being rejected even by your own kids. Another fruit of the spirit of rejection is self-rejection right? Suicide is an extreme form of self-rejection. 
Often the depression and despair has become so strong that a spirit of death attaches itself to someone. Fantasy is another form of self-rejection. Often healing from rejection involves correcting a misplaced identity. And so as we deal with this spirit of rejection in the next few series, few weeks, we want to be clear about what it is, what it isn't, and how we can get free from it. But I want to just uh, educate you on what it really is so that you can see clearly the spirit of rejection and the many um, uh, tentacles that stem from it so that we can get to the root system of it. Amen. So again, we always want to start with a good foundation. So this is part one of the spirit of rejection. We're going to go into part two of the spirit of rejection in our next video, but I wanted you to know just how in, um, in depth it can go and how the fruit are just robust in dealing with them. So as we move forward, I just want to share that with you so that you can learn and see the, the, the roots, the fruits, the tentacles of the spirit of rejection. And now we can go about how we can get free from it in the video, in the part two of this series. We'll talk soon. Again, I am Prophetess Tabitha Pittman. It's been a blessing to share uh, the beginning of this uh, series on the spirit of rejection. God bless you. God keep you and make his face shine upon you.